time to piss off a lot of Axis Longboard users. This is the Axis Longboard in review and the honest truth behind these pedals. So, some background with my use on these. I've been using them for about six years now and it's been a long six years uh, with these guys. So, let's start off with just a few pros. Keep it nice and, you know, fluffy in the beginning before I really dig deep down into these. First, I love how easy these things come apart. It is unbelievable how simple it is to just rip these apart, maintain it, clean it, do whatever the fuck you want with it. Super easy to work with, like Lego bricks. All you need is an Allen key, or three, hope you don't lose them, and you'll be fine on a tour. Now, let's lead me to my next point. A lot of this damage you see here is actually from the pedals themselves. They love to eat itself, and I don't know why they kind of engineered it in this way, but there's a lot of damage on the knuckles, there's a lot of damage uh, to the points below here, um, and my biggest grief with these had to have been the stock beaters. Now, if I pull this one off here, I can show you just how sad these things were. And I think when I broke these initially, I was playing in so just a simple jam, and they actually snapped titanium rods snapped on me. Not even joking about that. So naturally, for the longest period of time, I was just using some cheap, you know, third-party beaters, just some crap that I found. And it was just up until recently that I put the speed beaters back on wherever precision, whatever the fuck Axis likes to call them, I don't know. Um, and only because the stock beaters they put on here, as you can tell, this is not a stock top beater right here. This is off some, I believe, Tama beaters that I just chopped over here, kind of ground it down, put it in there, and infinitely better. The stock beaters were ridiculous. I don't know how much they're charging for that bullshit. Don't buy it fucking ridiculous they would just simply it's on this weird kind of ball this gimbal kind of thing and it just fucking moves around like nuts you can't get it in a spot and they start unscrewing on you it's ridiculous there's no locking system for them either it's it's a joke it really is a joke and with these things priced at what they are i don't know uh for anyone else i'm in canada these are i saw them around thousand bucks brand new ridiculous i don't know why they sell um, this entire package for a thousand dollars, especially when they're including these uh, these jokes. Now, let's talk about quick and simple attachment of these rods. Let's say you're in a hurry, you're on next. The promoter just fucked you over, and you have to rush on stage. Fuck you, says Axis. Fuck you. Why? Because their system is so unfucking reliable. I can't even count how many times on my two hands these two have fallen off mid-set and I was down to just a single beater, okay? Way too many times, Axis. Way too many times. I have a pair of sonars that have two locking screws. Very simple system. Very simple that they could have just added another one in. And it's not... You're paying for just another little set screw there. Come on, Axis, this is ridiculous. I'll show you. These things, you have to crank them down. That, look, that that was loose. I didn't even fucking loosen it freehand. And these things, yeah, there it goes. I mean, these are just prone to fail. Um, and you can see all the damage over here. It's already uh, being just chopped away at. And again, just by their own devices. It's doing it to itself. They did not design it in a great way. Uh, it just, it munches itself, and now I'm left with a kind of rounded point to lock it onto, and, you know, fuck me, right? Okay, moving on. 
I noticed this, I think, my last tour. Um, these things come included with two plastic washers to raise the heel plate so you're not gnashing it. Now, these broke. You know what that means? That means it's been grinding itself and now I have that beautiful sound, that beautiful fucking movement whenever I'm playing. So that throws me off, and you think Axis would get in touch with me for replacements or anything? No, they wouldn't. Axis has had a track record of having terrible customer service, so if you think you're going to have any sort of quick response or some sort of help for any small broken part, go fuck yourself. Well, you have these uh, little sliders here that go up and down so you can configure the height of the plate, blah, 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 blah. That broke. If you noticed this oh shit where is it this is still intact this one is not why because they cut corners super cheap plastic super cheap plastic on these little screws here and they uh yeah this thing broke real quick real quick and i'm nice to my pals i don't you know i don't throw them around i'll chuck them around i treat them quite nicely i just turn this thing and it snapped that's it i didn't throw it like no excuse for that to break and just a final tip on uh you know making sure you're aware of what's breaking on these things because that's going to happen these rubber stoppers right here which ones where are they oh yeah that's right they broke and they fell off these are the ones i'm talking about these will dry up on you they will crack and break why i don't know this is the only part holding the rim of the bass drum and clamping it down to there. Without it, it's, this, it's not going to work out for you. It's not going to clamp down. So now, I actually, this was my main one, and I had to swap all the guts around and internals to try to configure it so it fits. So there's that. I can no longer use this one, and finding a part for it, I'm, I'm have to, I'll, I'll have to DIY it. I'll have to figure out some other system but I don't got those anymore okay so let's move on to my preference and my opinion on how they play okay so this is very subjective all right very very subjective the system overall is very smooth buttery smooth these things feel incredible they have great bounce I have no complaint. It, look, it just lightly touching it, it moves. Fantastic. It's great for speed, obviously, the length. You play over here, go really fast with it, heel toe, whatever you want, really long, you can toe up here, heel down here, you can really have a lot of surface area. Fantastic. Now, this might piss some of you off, but in my opinion, these are for triggers. This is for a trigger system. If you are playing anything that requires heavy force, heavy punch, uh, a lot of delivery from the beaters, you're in the wrong section of pedals. Don't expect these pedals to deliver a huge punch. These are meant to go quick, and with speed, you must trigger. They play very light. So, I highly recommend you look at the Iron Cobra series, something that is going to deliver a bigger, heftier, chunkier hit. If you're looking for that, if you have a trigger system or an E-kit that allows you to put on a double pedal, I highly recommend these. Up the sensitivity on them, and you can fly with these no problem. But like I've said, all you're gonna hear is little tiny fast tippy taps with these pedals. They even sell a trigger add-on for these things to put over here so it actually senses when you hit. Which is why I really think these are not a heavy hitting pedal, they're just fast. Really fucking fast. And they do that very well, so I will give them that. But like I said, like I said, these snapped on me. 
from playing a little bit too hard. Titanium. Titanium rods, people. Snap on me. From playing some fucking light jam. Okay? So, I warn you. You must do your research on these. This is the honest truth about these pedals. They have survived thus far through many of gigs, many of tours. They're going on to about year six with me now. Like I said, you have to baby these, you have to maintain these, and you have to make sure that whenever anything breaks on this, you have to replace it immediately, or you will have irreversible damage on this. And do not expect access to help you.